Hey guys, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks. And this time I'm going to give you a full review of the Tier 7 American Reward Tank Destroyer, the T28 Heavy Tank Concept. This is the reward in the game for the personal missions after you get the Stug 4. And it's a very novel vehicle with some impressive frontal armor, a decent 105mm gun. But more importantly, if you never manage to pick one of these up, I'm going to highlight some of the weak points of the vehicle because they seem to be rather impenetrable if you have no idea what you're engaging. Either way, I've got some Ace Tanker gameplay coming right up after I give you a full rundown of the statistics and capabilities of the T28 HTC. So here we have the T28 HTC compared to the T2580, which is a Tier 7 American tank destroyer without a turret, a Tier 7 American tank destroyer with the turret, the T25-2, and also the Tier 7 British tank destroyer, the AT-7, because it matches up fairly similarly to the T-28 HTC. So immediately we see that the T-28 HTC has better DPM than the T-25-2, but it pales in comparison compared to the T-25-80 and also the AT-7, which will deal 10% and 15% more damage over a minute respectively than the tank in question. And it's a very similar story with the penetration. The penetration is better than the 90mm that you get on the T-25-2, but worse than the 105mm mounted on the T25 AT, and far worse than that 20 pounder that we see on the 87. So damage wise, the T28 HTC deals 320 damage per shot, which is way, way, way better than the awful 230 that the 87 will deal, and substantially better also than the T25 2, but it doesn't really compare to, for example, the SU-152, which at the 122 millimeter is now dealing 390 alpha damage at tier seven. And if you use the 152 millimeter on that tank, you can do upwards of 700 to 900 damage if you can penetrate of course. One thing to watch out for with the T28 HTC is the shell velocity 872 meters a second. That is rather slow indeed and you are not going to be sniping very accurately at moving targets. But on the other hand you carry all the ammunition. You have 605 millimeter rounds in this vehicle. 50% more than the T25 AT. You are never going to run out really in a game as that's enough pretty much to kill the entirety of the enemy team multiple times over. So the aim time on the concept is 2.3 seconds, which is far worse than the non-reward vehicles. 1.7 seconds aim time on both the T25 AT and also the T25 II, which means that you're certainly not going to be snapping in your shots. A lot like with the 87, you do have substantial aim time in this tank. But unfortunately for the vehicle, it has got pretty horrific accuracy, especially for an American tank. 0.4 accuracy pales in comparison to the 0.31 that the 87 gets and is also rather lackluster compared to the 0.36 of the T25-2 and even worse than the rather mediocre accuracy of the T25-80 at 0.38. Luckily however the tank's gun dispersion ratings kind of make up at least while moving for this rather mediocre aim time, well at least in this comparison. There's more bad news as well when we look at the elevation and depression angles of this tank. 15 degrees of elevation way worse than the T25-80 and massively worse than the T25-2 but better than the awful gun elevation of the AT-7 which is a major downside to that vehicle but the depression of this tank is four degrees that is completely awkward which is worse than the AT-7's mediocre five degrees of gun depression and massively worse than the T-25 AT and also the T-25-2 which get 10 degrees of gun depression but thankfully the HTC does have an ace up its sleeve and that's its gun traverse which is 30 degrees to the left and 30 degrees to the right as we can see here that is significantly better than for example the AT-7's seven degrees to the left and seven degrees to the right which means that you are going to be able to aim your vehicle without having to break your binoculars, without even having to turn the tracks if you are tracked, significantly increasing the flexibility of the T28 HTC. So what about the top speed limit of the HTC? Well, 29 kilometers an hour forwards is rather decent, especially compared to the 87, but that's much, much, much worse than the T2580 and T2582, which have got 56 kilometers an hour top speed limit forwards. It goes backwards at 10. That's not impressive compared to the non-reward vehicles and the same as the 87 and it has a 960 horsepower engine which does sound rather impressive in this comparison but when we find out that the vehicle weighs nearly 70 tons that means that its power to weight ratio is rather mediocre at 13.77 at least compared to the non-reward American tier 7 tank destroyers but at least it's better than the 87 but unfortunately this vehicle gets really really bad ground resistances 0.15 on hard 2.1 on medium? 
and 2.6 on soft, making this tank feel exceptionally sluggish, especially off-road. So I should also quickly mention that the T28 HTC has got 18 degrees a second traverse speed on its gun, making it feel like an exceptionally long time to turn this gun, especially compared to the T2580 and the 87. But then again, you could argue that the 87 doesn't even really have a gun arc to be able to turn the gun, so it doesn't matter. And furthermore, the traverse speed of the tank is rather mediocre at 18 degrees a second, easily allowing your opponents to flank you and just to circle you if they've got any kind of mobility. So we know that the HTC isn't very mobile and we know it weighs a hell of a lot, so that must indicate that it has some rather thick armor. And yes, it does indeed. 203 millimeters at the front, 101 at the side, and 50 at the rear. That's very similar to the 87's armor, as we can see here. And it absolutely trumps the T25 AT and the T25 II. Taking a look in more detail, we can see that the whole of the front of the tank is indeed that 203 millimeters, and you'd have to aim down at a very well-angled lower plate to find anything thinner, but that's going to be an auto ricochet, which is the same case for the upper hull. We can see here it is exceptionally well-angled, and unless you're opponents are aiming down on it like this where artillery shells will start to take advantage it is pretty much going to be an auto ricochet aiming at the front of the gun also can be a disaster as we can see it ranges up from about 250 all the way up to 300 millimeters in some parts but some areas around the gun do still only have 203 millimeters of protection but that's still rather very nice for a tier 7 tank and really, unless your opponents hit you in your weak points, most tier 5 to pretty much tier 8 tanks are going to fail to penetrate this tank reliably frontally very often indeed. But I think you guys can see two rather blaringly big weak points on this tank. If I change it to the visual model, you can see it's got these two machine guns on the side of the vehicle, both of them visible from the front. And unless you angle your armor and come around a corner, one of them is visible at all times relevant of where you are engaging a T28 HD. And these machine gun ports have only got 100 to 150 millimeters of effective armor from the front. And as we can see here, they are just a big glowing shoot me here icon all around the tank, which is rather frustrating indeed. Furthermore, if you do get the opportunity to shoot at the cupolas of the T28 HTC, you can do this. And as long as you hit them towards the middle, you only need about 75 to 100 millimeters of penetration to go through them but they are quite small for cupolas, making them quite hard to be able to hit. And you you would do far better to just shoot these machine gun ports on the side. And this for me really is the downside to this tank. As soon as you know this, uh, I mean, as soon as somebody is knowledgeable and they've watched this video or they've just shot at the tank a bunch of times and thought, oh, let's try this spot. Let's try shooting that spot. Taking out one of these vehicles is just super simple. I shoot it here. Oh, he's angling like this. Oh, I shoot it here. Do not get baited into shooting the lower plate of this tank. It does look like a very juicy, soft target that's very flat, but it is not very soft. It's very thick. And when the T28 HTC angles his armor like this, it goes up to about 250 millimeters of effective armor, enough to bounce pretty much everything that's going to shoot at it. Even most premium rounds on tier nine tanks are not going to be able to go through the front of this vehicle, but a knowledgeable player will be just shooting this machine gun port. Now, one thing that you can do in the T28 HTC See, which is very very satisfying indeed is using this gun arc why not angle it all the way over here and come round the corner let's just imagine that uh that my calculator here is a corner you come round the corner like this thus hiding the weak point on the side of your tank and now what do your opponents have to shoot at well 240 millimeters of lower plate armor that is a very quick way to get a steel war medal auto ricochets off the top because the normalization angle is above 80 degrees there. And if they want to try and shoot the outside of your gun, it's still 250 in parts. And they're going to have to hit your tiny cupolas on top of the tank if they want to be able to penetrate this vehicle. And unlike the KV-4 Kroslavski that I reviewed a few weeks ago, it can do this on both sides of the tank. For example, say you're coming around the corner this way. Well, there you go. You've got a good opportunity and you can take out your opponents like that. And that is one of the very nice things about the gun arc on this tank, that you can just bait people to be shooting you in the lower plate. And as long as they're not, say, for example, an ISU, or it's something like an IS-3 firing premium rounds, or possibly even an E-75, you should be able to ricochet them. But for all of you out there who have no interest in doing the personal missions or picking up one of these tanks, just don't get baited into shooting the lower plate. Find a way to shoot the machine gun port, or use the fact that it's got very poor track traverse speed to be able to detrack it, flank it, 
and then shoot its juicy side armor here. Now on to the second thing that I really dislike about the HTC and that is the amount of hit points that it has. 880 hit points? Fair enough, that's just slightly more than the T25-80 and the T25-2. But considering how immobile this tank is and how heavy it is, you'd expect it to have a big old slab of hit points, a lot like the 87. And this is one of the specialities of the 87. Pretty much 50% more hit points than the T28 HTC, which just allows you to survive longer to be able to trade better, especially against higher tiered opponents that are able to penetrate your armor anyway. And this is certainly one of the downsides of the tank, the fact that you can quite often get two shots if they manage to get your side or your rear. And there are even some tanks, even at tier 8 like the ISU-152, that are going to be removing pretty much all of if not most of your hit points every time they hit you. And as you can imagine 880 hit points doesn't go a long way when you're trying to weather the storm from the enemy artillery to be able to take out the tanks before you're able to get into cover in your slow lumbering tank. Fortunately the vehicle does have a view range advantage over the AT7 and also the T25 AT which does give it exceptional view range especially if you choose to use binoculars on this tank. And I should also highlight that the T28 HTC sees vehicles up to tier 9 unlike the Stug that could only see vehicles up to tier 6 and never had to meet tier 7s. So how should you equip the T28 HTC? Well, of course you want to be taking a gun rammer to increase your rate of fire by 10%. Next, you probably want to be taking vents on this vehicle to make the vehicle overall about 2.6% better. And I feel the only real option on this tank is the third slot, and because the vehicle has 370 meters base view range, unless you have an exceptional crew with situational awareness, brothers in arms and recon on the commander and you're probably also going to be using a premium consumable you're not really going to get that view range very high by using coated optics so i recommend using a binocular telescope to give yourself a chance at long range but if you absolutely hate getting damaged by high explosive shells you might want to be using a heavy spool liner on this vehicle but because it's not exceptionally heavy it's only 30 percent protection compared to the 50 percent protection you'll be getting with a super heavy spool liner or alternatively if you find yourself getting trapped all the time and that's allowing your opponents to get around you in close quarters combat possibly a toolbox will be useful for you crew skills wise you want to be taking repairs first that is your number one priority because as soon as you're tracked in this tank and the enemies get your side or your rear you are a goner after reaching your first skill retrain and get sixth sense and take repairs again and when you reach your third skill retrain again get brothers in arms sixth sense and then start repairs after this it's certainly up for debate what subsequent skills you would want to pick on your commander because the vehicle actually has has okay camera rating as it is a tank destroyer you might want to take concealment alternatively if you don't want to use binoculars and you want to bump up your view range a little bit even while moving take situational awareness one other skill such as jack of all trades could come in very handy if you want to instead drop out the med kit and take a second repair kit for your gunner i would recommend taking camouflage over snapshot but there is also an argument to be taking armor on this tank as people quite often shoot at the gun and damage it on your drive i recommend taking clutch braking and then eventually off-road driving two very important skills to get your mobility up a little bit considering this is a rather immobile vehicle and the vehicle also has two loaders and so this means you should definitely invest in safe stowage on a single loader because remember you don't get benefit from having it on two loaders so you'll just be wasting a, a skill slot which gives you more than enough slots to take repairs and then follow it up with some concealment improvements but anyway i think that's quite enough theory crafting let's take a look to see what this beast is capable of in some gameplay. So here we go, I'm playing in Lakeville and yes I am in a very nice matchup. If you guys want to know how this vehicle does against tier 8 and tier 9 tanks, well pretty much imagine that as soon as anything has about 240, 245 millimeters of penetration, they're going to penetrate your lower plate irrelevant of how well you angle it. And generally when you go up the tiers, people are more knowledgeable and know about shooting you in the machine gun port. And as I mentioned, those 880 hit points do not go a long way. And so I find that the time that you can actually have your most fun in this vehicle is obviously when you're top tier, when you're engaging tier 5s, when you're engaging tier 6s. Because if we think about it, the average penetration at tier 5 is probably about maybe 130 millimeters. And when you jump up to tier 6, it's starting to become more like 150 millimeters. And then tier 7, we're pretty much at about 175 millimeters of penetration on most of the tanks that you're going to be engaging. Yeah, and then as soon as you load premium rounds, obviously tier 6 jumps up to about 
200 millimeters and tier 7 jumps up to about 225 millimeters of penetration and that is not enough still to be able to go through shall we say at least the the bounceable parts of the t28 htc armor and that's when this vehicle is any fun to play or or remotely interesting at least to to have sort of a, a tank review perspective on it if you really 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 want to see some gameplay of how well this tank does in high tier matchups either against knowledgeable opponents that know where to shoot it or in against higher amounts of artillery where they're just dropping big bombs on it or alternatively as soon as your enemies have got about 250 260 millimeters of penetration and just kill it almost before it's been able to do anything i i just imagine it you guys you guys know how well this tank is going to do so check out the mobility of the T-28 HTC. While the vehicle does have the top speed limit of 29 kilometers an hour, it's not really going to get there quickly. And I expect that this grass counts as maybe medium terrain. So I'm going to try and get on the path here and try and get on the hard terrain where hopefully we get up to, yes, now we're back up to about 28, 29 kilometers an hour. So really the T-28 HTC off-road and we predicted where that guy was going to be when we got spotted there there's only one place somebody's going to spot you we're going to fire on the move remember the dispersion isn't too bad while you're moving on this tank unlike i believe it was on the the 87 so you can actually fire on the move quite effectively on the t28 htc especially when you hardly ever pick up any speed so what i'm going to do is i'm going to make my way behind this abbey this abbey is absolutely awesome as we put in a round into the Skoda T40 there and he tracks us. This abbey will protect us from artillery and it will also allow us to hopefully engage our opponents one by one by one. Oh, this tiger is going to be regretting life right about now. As we lock down his tracks and now I'm going to angle my tank. And I'm just going to show you what he's seeing right now. What is this tiger seeing while we're killing him and just locking him down and just chewing up on his hit points? He basically can't see very much of my vehicle. If we look at what his turret can see, he couldn't actually see anything. And in that moment, all he could really see was the uh, the lower plate of my tank, which, as I discussed, angled is about 240 millimeters of effective armor. And even with premium rounds, he's hardly ever going to be able to go through my lower plate there. And so this is really what the T-28 HTC is all about. It's a bully of a tank that likes to put big 320 alpha damage shots in with its 105mm while hopefully baiting its opponents to shoot at its lower plate. And if you do that enough, then you are going to be successful in this tank. And when you get to shoot a big fat Japanese heavies while using the, your, re the wrecks of your enemies to cover your weak armor against your opponents that are trying to flank you, then you are going to be very successful indeed. And those are the kind of things that you have to look out for in the T28 HD. So you have to use either the terrain or wrecks that you've created or wrecks of, N of your friends who have fallen around you to protect the softer parts of your tanks. And don't be afraid to get up in the face of your opponents as well. Fair enough, they might shoot you straight in the machine gun port, either on the left or the right of the tank. But if you really get up in their face and then you start to wiggle your gun in their face, then they're, they're probably not going to be able to hit your machine gun ports on the side quite so often. In fact, the enemies got so frustrated at shooting at me there by the looks of it that they have decided to start firing high explosive rounds. Now, they did a little, little bit of damage with the high explosive rounds, but it wasn't enough. And we're up to 3,700 damage done now in the first four and a half minutes of the game. But now, of course, what's the T-28 HTC going to do for, for the remainder? Like hell am I going to be able to drive over there to get the ARL 44? I'm going to try and make my way into a position where hopefully I can get a shot at the, the Panzer 38 NA on the enemy team, where the artillery is hopefully not going to be able to harass me. So sit in the cap circle, wait for the game to develop, and that's about it. And... Oh, wow, the PZ-38 on the enemy team decides to drown himself, and so I make my way into position to hopefully get an ambush shot from the ARL-44, while also using the buildings on my right to hide from the artillery. And guys, this is pretty much it. Oh, I guess I leave the cap circle. Now I see the ARL-44 dies, and I make a decision. Shall I go and try and find the Hummel? Oh, I'm never going to get there in time. Let's just go get a few cap points, right? And guys, that's pretty much it. This is the T-28 HTC. It's... There's really not that much to learn in this tank. I wouldn't say that it's got a very ultra low skill cap because there are still some things that you can do well in this tank to be able to give yourself a good opportunity. But if you're fighting one, it's as black and white as shoot it here, shoot it here, 
or alternatively hit the cupolas on top of the tank. If you've got 240 millimeters of penetration, you can pen the lower plate while he's angling like this. And if he's not angling the lower plate at all, you're going to need about 220 millimeters of penetration to get through it. And if you're a T28 HTC driver, as I showed against the Tiger, the number one important thing for you to do in this tank is to hide your weak points bait your lower plate and try and get your opponents to shoot at it. And if you do that well enough, then you'll be immensely successful in the tier seven American reward tank destroyer. So on Lakeville, we get an ace tanker. We get a cool headed medal for surviving at least 10 ricochets in a row, which is impressive considering the caliber of guns that were hitting us were between 75 and 88 millimeters. Also a steel wall medal. How much exactly did we bounce here? 2,310 with the 16 shells that hit our tank and only one of those managed to penetrate. And I believe that was a high explosive round. We also get a high caliber for the 3,739 damage that we dealt here. And we also make a small profit because we didn't fire any premium rounds, only resupplying 16,000 ammunition for the 16 shots that we fired and 38,000 credits profit. Remember that this vehicle is a reward tank and you can use any of your American tank destroyer crews in it and accelerate their crew training, but it's not going to make you large amounts of credits like a premium tank would. And so that really pretty much sums up the T28 HTC. I mean, it's not a fantastic tank, but it can do very well, especially in a top tier matchup. A lot of people quite like the playstyle of this tank. They enjoy having crazy amounts of armor and to laugh as people literally cannot penetrate them and they can just grind them down shot by shot by shot. But personally for me, I don't really enjoy playing this one and I vastly prefer the T55A and the Object 260, which are the third and the fourth reward for the personal missions subsequently after the T28 HTC. But hopefully you guys enjoyed this video or maybe it was just useful to you. If it was, please consider giving it a like. It really helps the channel out and let me know in the comments down below if you have a T28 HTC and do you love it or do you hate it? And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.